The last message sent by 17-year-old Zion Foster before her sudden disappearance said she was on her way home. Zion had informed both her mother and her boyfriend that she would be spending the evening with her favourite cousin, something she did regularly, at least twice a month. However, when her mother reached out to the cousin the next day for help in finding her, he delivered a shocking revelation. He claimed he hadn't seen or spoken to Zion in years. On January 5th, 2022, Sierra Milton, a mother of six, awoke to discover that her eldest daughter, Zion Foster, had not returned home the previous night. Zion was a senior at East Detroit High School and had just celebrated her 17th birthday in November. Like many teenagers, Zion had gone through a rebellious phase. She had threatened to run away and even followed through the year before. At 16, frustrated with her mother's rules, she fled to her grandmother's house. Although she was convinced to return home, she soon left again, causing enough concern for Sierra to involve the police. However, this too turned out to be a false alarm, as Zion was struggling with her grandmother's recent cancer diagnosis and her own desire for independence. But this January morning was different. The night before, Zion had finished her shift at the Detroit Wing Company. After returning home, she asked for permission to go out, being transparent about her plans to spend time with her favourite cousin, Jalen. With these assurances, Sierra agreed and watched as Zion walked out the door, just before 11pm. The following day, Zion's boyfriend, Vertez Gonzalez, a fellow high school student, contacted Sierra to ask if she had heard from Zion. He was unable to reach her, and the last text he had received from her was at 12.59am, reading simply, OMW, on my way. But Zion never made it home. Calls to her phone went straight to voicemail, and messages sent throughout the night remained undelivered. Finally, at 8.53am, Vertez sent a desperate message, Are you alive? Followed by, This is the worst thing ever. Adding to the growing alarm was the response Sierra received from Jalen Breyer, the cousin Zion claimed she was with. Contrary to what Zion had told her, Jalen insisted that he had not seen Zion the night before. He even asked Sierra how often Zion had said she was spending time with him. When Sierra responded that Zion had mentioned hanging out with him once or twice a month, Jalen expressed frustration, calling Zion's lies sneaky and unsafe. He speculated that Zion might have been spending time with someone else who lived nearby, using him as a cover. He advised Sierra to report Zion's disappearance to the police, but asked to be left out of it. However, Vertez was not convinced. He bombarded Jalen with messages and even confronted him with a screenshot showing Zion's location across the street from Jalen's home at 11.24pm the previous night. In response, Jalen sent a video from his ring camera system claiming there was no footage of Zion entering his house that night. Initially, the East Point police were slow to take Sierra's report seriously, viewing Zion's disappearance as just another case of a runaway teen. Sierra recalled how blunt the officers were, telling her that they were handling the case as though Zion had simply run away. With little support from law enforcement, Sierra took matters into her own hands, organising a search effort with the help of family and friends. They distributed flyers, held rallies and reached out to the media, pleading for help. Eventually, the police did visit Jalen Breyer. Jalen, who was actually a first cousin to Zion's former stepfather, was 23 years old, a father of two, and lived with his long-term partner, Katrina. He welcomed the officers into his home and reiterated that he had not seen Zion since May 2021. He expressed his frustration over being dragged into the situation by Zion's mother and boyfriend, who were fixated on the idea that Zion had been with him that night. He even offered to show the police footage from his ring camera, but Sierra remained unconvinced. She knew Jalen was lying because she had personally seen him pick Zion up from the house many times before. To verify whether Zion had indeed been across the street from Jalen's house, as her location data suggested, the police reviewed footage from a neighbour's doorbell camera. The footage showed a white sedan, identified as Jalen's car, 
pulling into his driveway at around 11.15 p.m. on January 4th. The camera captured two individuals exiting the vehicle and entering the house, one male and one female. Jalen had dropped Katrina off at work earlier that night for her midnight shift, which ran from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. therefore. The second individual entering the house could not have been Katrina. Phone location data later confirmed that the two people captured on camera were Jalen Breyer and Zion Foster. Notably, the camera did not show Zion leaving the house. At 1.41 a.m., the same camera recorded Jalen pulling his car out of the driveway and then backing it in, with the trunk now facing the backyard. After a few minutes, the car drove off, returning to the house less than 10 minutes later. Search warrants were soon issued for Jalen's house and car. While the search of the house yielded no evidence, the examination of the car was more revealing. Although no clear evidence was found initially, the introduction of cadaver dogs changed everything. The dogs reacted strongly to the trunk of Jalen's car. On January 19th, Jalen, accompanied by a friend who was a lawyer, voluntarily met with detectives. He admitted to lying about his whereabouts on the night Zion disappeared and offered a new version of events. He claimed that after picking up Zion from her home, they went back to his place. He put his two young children to bed and then he and Zion hung out, talking about her life, her improved relationship with her mother, her boyfriend and plans for prom. Jalen stated that Zion suddenly became unresponsive while he was getting a drink. He said she had seemed tired and had laid her head back as if to rest. When he returned, he tried to wake her up, but she didn't respond. As Jalen continued to recount the events of that night, he described his growing panic. If she was still alive at that point, I thought maybe she was just really tired or something. You know, from, you know, just hanging out, he explained. But when he started shaking Zion to wake her, she didn't respond. I checked her pulse and she wasn't breathing, he admitted, his voice trembling. At that point, I was freaking out. The detective pressed further. So, you were sure she was gone? Jalen hesitated before confirming, Yeah, I couldn't feel a heartbeat, couldn't see any breathing. I assumed she was dead. The detective then asked Jalen to show them what he had done next, emphasising the importance of recovering Zion if she was still there or, if not, locating where she was. But what Jalen revealed next shocked everyone. He said, My baby just died, and then I threw her in a dumpster. His words hung in the air, heavy with the horrifying realisation that Zion had been discarded like trash. As the legal battle unfolded, the community rallied around Sierra Milton, offering unwavering support. Vigils were organised, with hundreds gathering to light candles and share memories of Zion. The case gained national attention, putting immense pressure on authorities to intensify their efforts to find Zion and bring justice to her family. In January 2023, nearly a year after Zion's disappearance, investigators received a tip that led them to a remote area near the Pine Tree Acres landfill. Cadaver dogs were brought in again, and this time, they picked up a scent. After an exhaustive search, Zion Foster's remains were finally discovered, bringing a bittersweet sense of relief and heartbreak to her family and the community. The discovery of Zion's body was crucial in unravelling the truth. Forensic analysis indicated signs of trauma, contradicting Jalen Breyer's claim that Zion had died of a drug overdose. This evidence breathed new life into the investigation, and detectives redoubled their efforts to build an unalive case against Jalen. Meanwhile, Sierra and her family braced themselves for the long and painful road ahead in the justice system. The community continued to stand by them, organising fundraisers for legal fees and events to keep Zion's story alive in the public's mind. Sierra became a voice for her daughter, speaking at rallies and emphasising the need for systemic changes in how missing persons cases are handled. In the spring of 2023, Jalen Breyer was formally charged with second-degree unaliving. The courtroom was packed with supporters, media and those who had followed the case from the beginning. 
the prosecution presented a compelling case highlighting Jalen's inconsistent statements, the evidence of trauma on Zion's body and his failure to seek medical help. In contrast, Jalen's defence argued that he had panicked and made poor decisions out of fear, insisting that Zion's death was an accident and not a deliberate act of harm. Despite the defence's efforts, the overwhelming evidence and the emotional testimonies from Zion's loved ones painted a clear picture of Jalen's responsibility. After weeks of trial, the jury delivered a guilty verdict. Jalen Breyer was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. The courtroom was filled with a mixture of tears and applause as Zion's family finally felt a sense of justice. In the aftermath of the trial, Sierra Milton turned her grief into action. She established the Zion Foster Foundation, dedicated to supporting families of missing and murdered children and advocating for improved policies and resources. Sierra's tireless work has already led to changes in local law enforcement protocols ensuring that future missing persons cases are treated with the seriousness they deserve from the start. Sierra's journey and Zion's legacy are powerful reminders of the strength of community, the importance of perseverance and the relentless pursuit of justice. Through their pain and loss, the Milton family has inspired meaningful change, ensuring that Zion's memory will continue to make a difference in the lives of others. And that concludes the heartbreaking story of Zion Foster. Her tragic disappearance and the relentless pursuit of justice by her family and community serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of vigilance, community support, and the fight for justice. If you found this story compelling, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and don't forget to subscribe for more true crime stories and updates. Stay safe, stay aware, and we'll see you in the next video.